Hello and welcome to the sending events and event data tutorial. In this tutorial, you're gonna be learning about, well, sending events, but also about the data that you can send with those events and how to receive that data on the other end of whatever is receiving that event. Let's just do a recap of what events and transitions even are. So events and transitions are two sides of the same coin. Events don't really have anything to do without transitions and transitions can't really do anything without events. So let's take a look at, for example, this empty game object I have here, just called the Joe game object. I'm gonna add an FSM on here. To begin with, you create events. So you have a tab here called events. So if I add an event, I'm gonna call this my event. Okay, now we have it here in our list of events. But there's no real good that that's doing just sitting there existing like that. So you have to do something with it. Let's just throw in a wait action. Okay, so I'm gonna put a wait action in here. So this wait action will wait a second before a finish event is sent. So the finish event will send is my event. Now again, we only have events set up right now. This is still totally useless, but thankfully Playmaker gives us this nice big red button that reminds us, event not used by this state or any global transition. Click to add transition to state. So it's saying click to add transition. I'm gonna add that, and here's my event again. Now it's just kind of funny because the thing is called my event, but what this is right here, this little box underneath the state, this is a transition. The thing you can drag your arrows around from, that's a transition. So I'm gonna lead it off to another state. And that is a common setup, right? You have an action that sends an event, in this case it's called my event, and the respective transition of that event is also called my event, and that allows it to do its thing. So if I press play, it waits a second, and then it fires off that transition and goes to state two. Great, now, like I said, they depend on each other. So if I got rid of this action, and we just have this my event transition here, and there's nothing sending that transition, there's no event to trigger that transition, and I hit play, nothing happens, we just stay here. Okay, now this is all very incredibly obvious, and I just wanna say this last thing though, if I add another state and add global transition, we can also put my event. And this dark gray box up here is a global transition. The dark gray boxes that have arrows pointing down to a state, those are called global transitions. If I wanted to, I can also delete this local transition here and then put in a wait state that sends off that my event, right? So there's no transition in this, in this start state, right? But we still have an action that sends my event. If I hit play, waits a second, and then it gets sent off to this global transition, okay? Because this global transition is still there, it's still able to receive it. Global transitions can be received from anywhere. They get fired off wherever, as long as there is something sending that global event. So you can kind of think about it in terms of a phone making the call, and then this is the phone receiving, receiving call. So this state has the action that has the event being sent, right? So this is like the phone making the call. And then this state doesn't have any actions in it, but it has this global transition. And so it's like the phone receiving the call, right? So you have a phone that makes the call and a phone that receives the call. And that analogy goes further where you can imagine something like a audio play, right? And this could be playing an audio clip of like ringing sound effects. So when a phone in real life actually receives a call, only when it receives the call does it have some programming of like what to do, whether it shows the name on the caller ID or shows a picture on the caller ID or has a specific ringtone for that person. And that's kind of what we're gonna be learning today is the information that comes with the call itself, the information that you could send with the transition. Now, the way you do that is by using actions that are built for sending data like that. So, so if you type in event into your action browser, you'll see that you have this nice list of actions here that say event properties, event data. There's all these specific ones for event int data, event float data, bool data. You have get event info, okay, event target, setting an event data versus getting the event info. These two work together. Let's make a simple example to give you an idea of how send events and their event data 
is very useful. For example, I have a player capsule here and I have an NPC here. The NPC doesn't do anything, it just kind of has an idle animation. And the player here, this is just a first person controller, so we can kind of move around, look around, and there is a player interact FSM on here. All the player interact FSM does is shoots a raycast, and then it checks what it hit, then sends the thing that it hit this event, this interact event. Okay, so whatever's on the receiving end gets that interact event. So I'm gonna select my NPC, and I'm gonna go ahead and add an FSM, and I'm gonna give it that interact event. Custom events, interact event. Okay, so this will get sent off when the player interacts with it. Let's just do a quick test. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on the NPC right now, and you'll see in the FSM that that gets fired off. Okay, perfect, it's working well. Now, the way that we can send information with that is by starting here on our player. This is kind of like if you still want to use the analogy of the phone in this interact state, this is where we can sort of set up the data that gets sent with our phone call, like who is calling, what their phone number is, what their name might be. And the way you do that is by using set event actions. A simple one to start with would be set event string data. Okay, and I'm gonna put it before the event gets sent. This is the part that makes a little package and then the send event itself is the thing that sends that little package. Okay, so in the set event string data, in the string data, I'm just gonna type in hello. Okay, so this string data is getting sent specifically with this interact event. That means to receive this data, it needs to be immediately after this interact event is received. Okay, so in other words, on our NPC, this is our interact event, right? And immediately after, we're in state two where we should receive that data. Okay, and what we could do is throw in a get event, get event string data, okay? We just sent string data from the player and now we're getting that string data. So in get string data, I'm gonna store this as, we could just say message from player. Okay, now let's keep an eye on this. I'm gonna hit play. And I'm gonna come over to our NPC and I'm gonna interact with them, here we go. Okay, and you can see right here, the string data was received, it says hello. All right, so that is the most simple version of this. Now let's, let's step it up a notch. Okay, so in our player, instead of setting event string data, what I'll do is set event data, just period, okay? And what this allows you to do is send all different types of data together. This is like one big package. So you send game objects, int, float, string, bool, vector threes, materials, objects, blah, 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 blah. So you could use this set event data to do what we just did, right? This, the sending the string one. So we could do this hello again, okay? And if I press play, and I come over here, let me just select the NPC so you can see it happen. And here we go. Okay, and then you have it right there, hello again. But if you wanna send more things, like say you wanted to send some int data, like you could just send how much damage I just did. Maybe interacting with this NPC is also a way I'm dealing damage to them. So I could send a little int data of five and then in the NPC, I could do a get event int data, and then I'll say damage to deal. Okay, and then I hit play, and I'm gonna interact. Okay, and there it is, got a little five. So we got hello again and five. So it's kinda like we just said hello and then punched them in the face. So you could do something with this data now. In your NPC, you can imagine setting up the logic that says, all right, well, I'm gonna use this damage to deal to subtract from the overall health of the NPC, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, but let's look a little bit more into setting this event data. Now, if you sent all these things, you know, you're sending a vector two, material object. I mean, even if, even if you're just sending two of these things, back in the NPC, you don't wanna have to stack up all these actions and what you could do instead is just get event info so this is a way of receiving everything the syntax and vocabulary of this might be a little confusing 
Uh, you might expect get event data would be sort of the opposite end at this, but here we are. Just remember it's called get event info. So in here, I have the get int data, damage to deal, and I could get my string data message from player, but I can also get sent by game object. And I could store that in a new variable called the player that interacted with me. Okay, so this is a way of getting whoever just sent that information. It's kind of like a return address. So now if I press play and I interact, boom, there we go. It gives me the hello again, it gives me the five, and it gives me the player game object. So I can select this, right? And there it is, that's us. The player is the thing that sent that event to it. So this NPC recognizes that. That's a way of kind of keeping your checks and balances of where your event info comes from. So again, you can imagine using this information now in the logic for having an NPC that rewards you with something. You talk to them and at the end of the conversation they give you something. Well, how are they gonna give it to you unless they know which game object to target, who you even are? So by talking with them, they get that sent event by and they now they know, okay, well, when I wanna give the player an item, I'll target this player game object to give them an item. And the other thing that you can use is not just setting the event data, but you can also do set event properties. And by the way, if you do not have these get event properties or set event properties actions, you can come over here to the ecosystem, type in utils, that is U-T-I-L-S, search that, and here we have the Playmaker Utils package. This package comes with a handful of custom actions that aren't directly downloadable from the ecosystem, but are contained here in the package itself. So I'm gonna put this in here, and remember it's always before the send event. Setting the event data is like writing the letter, packaging up your package, putting the postage stamp on it, and then send event is like dropping it into the mailbox. In set event properties, the way this works is that you can type in a number here for however many pieces of information you wanna send along. So in our case, maybe let's send five. Now, the way that this one works is a little different. It asks you what type of data do you want to send for each of these items. So maybe you wanna send a float, you wanna send a string, and you wanna send, not an enum, but a game object. And maybe you wanna send a, a bool as well as a color. So now you can have a get event properties on the other end that gets each of these things as well. But the thing is you have to use keys to receive them. So let's just do two for example right now. We'll have a float and a string and we'll say the key for the float will be the health. We'll say that's the health float and we'll send over 5.5. And then for the string, it'll be the name and the data that we're sending with it is Joe. So on the other end, we're gonna specifically have to use this key to get this information. So I'm gonna send four values instead and we're gonna send this health, which is a float, this name, which is a string, and then we're gonna send one called damage, which is also a float. And this one will be 2.3. And then we'll be sending favorite type of music. And that's also a string. And they like jazz. Now on the receiving end, we're gonna have to type all these exactly how they're spelled out. They are case sensitive and everything. But just remember that we have a health float a damage float, a name string, and a favorite type of music string. So over here on the NPC, instead of get event info, we're gonna do get event properties. And it's four values that we're looking for. The first one is health. Second one is damage. Third one is name. And the fourth one is favorite type of music. Okay, that health was a float. We're gonna store it in a new variable called health damage was also a float. I'm gonna store it in a new variable called damage. The name was a string and we're gonna save that in a new variable called name. And the favorite type of music was also a string. We're saving that in a new variable 
called favorite type of music. So now I'm gonna hit play and I'm gonna interact with this NPC. Okay, there we go. Health, 5.5, damage, 2.3, name, Joe, favorite type of music, jazz. Git event properties, the utility of it is in that you can get multiple of the same type of values. If you were using git event info, you can only get one of each, right? Otherwise you're gonna have to do git event string data twice and git event float data twice. So git event properties is a nice way to do multiple things in one go, it's just a little bit more organized. I highly encourage you to come over here and look through your state machine category to see all of these event actions. You can just type in event and it'll give you all sorts of actions that you can use with events and event data. For example, I could start this off with a get event sent by so I can get where this event came from again. Kind of like I did earlier when I found out it was the player that was sending it. So I could sent by game object, the player that interacted with me. And what's nifty about this one is that you could store new variable name of player. So it'll get the name of the player game object, which is honestly just player. And in here, you can also get the FSM name that it was sent from. So sent by this FSM. Okay, so getting your FSM name is also really handy because if you wanted to have this NPC send some information back to a specific FSM on the player, now you have the FSM which you might want to target. So I'm gonna press play. Okay, and interact. There you go. Got the player game object, got it stored in a string called player, and then we could see that it came from the FSM called player interact. Sending events and using event data is one of the best ways that you can have systems interact with each other, whether you're dealing damage to an enemy, whether you're dynamically uploading a dialogue screen with an NPC, or even just turning things on and off. There's honestly all sorts of ways that you could be using event data and events in your own projects. Be sure to check out our other videos to learn all the various features of Playmaker. Links to more learning resources are in the description.